Where the fuck do I even start with this? Harry Kane wallops Manchester United for six. What a state of affairs. <laughs> I loved how Patrice ever came out and said, I don't promote violence, but many people need a good slap at this club. Couldn't agree any more with him. Not just that, Gary Neville also said, there's no excuse for those players today. It was a disgrace. It was spiritless. This is the exact same team, identical, that finished in the top three last year. We went on a bit of a run at the back end after lockdown, and we played very, very well. But it was damn obvious. So obvious that we were tired. We just scraped through, literally, by the skin of our teeth, making that top four. Just, if there wasn't a capitulation from Leicester, we probably wouldn't have made top four, and Chelsea as well. But this club, this team, needed reinforcements, needed new signings. It was so clear and obvious. But let's talk about this game. Where the fuck do I even start? I wrote some notes down, but honestly, 11 goals in three fucking games. Look, I get it. We played <clears throat> longer than everybody else at the back end last year, playing the few extra weeks in the Europa League. And we were, every other club's got a bit of a head start on us, but that's no excuse. Like, we've gone one nil up. I thought, happy days, we're on here. But that first goal that Tottenham scored, we gifted, and I mean fucking gave it to him. I fucking, mate, just on a silver platter, fucking here you go, Ndombele, fucking take that. Mate, we all wanted Eric Bay this morning. Well, I fucking did, and a lot, I know a lot of other United fans did too. But that fucking header was awful, and then you got Harry Maguire, fucking either give it to fucking De Gea or fucking clear it. Just as bad as Eric Bay's clearance. Luke Shaw doesn't know what the fuck's going on. And before David De Gea can even fucking make a save, the ball's gone past him. After going 1-0 up, it's 1-1 after like four minutes. I'm thinking, what the fuck have I even just witnessed? Imagine what Ollie's thinking <clears throat> on the touchline, on the dugout. Look. Marcial, what do you fucking do, eh? Like, you can't do that, but I don't blame him for the 6 1 fucking massacre that it was. Look, Oli was to blame for some things today, okay? I thought his substitutions at halftime were fucking terrible. Why would you take off Bruno Fernandes? The only fucking player that runs back just as hard as he does forward. You know, why would you take someone like that off? And Pogba just fucking jogging around, you know. Oh, mate, don't even get me start, started on fucking Pogba. Like, I know he's fucking good. Too fucking inconsistent. Like, he on his day, he's fucking brilliant. And I don't know he's won fucking World Cups. And I know he fucking points the finger in the dressing room. And, you know, he's a leader for fucking France. But where's his fucking leadership for us? I don't know, it's just fucking frustrating. Looking at the bigger picture, okay? We've been pointing at the board for years, all right? It's no coincidence that we found ourselves in this situation. None whatsoever. We were tired, like I said, at the back end of last season, okay? Not much of a preseason, all right? This year is going to be hard. It's a much shorter season with the pandemic and all, all right? So we're going to need a bigger squad to handle more games. We've qualified for the Champions League. We're going to need more players. No. One backup signing in Donny van der Beek. Look, he's a decent signing, but he's not breaking into the first 11. Well, he might fucking now after that performance, all right? But we are watching... Every other club makes signings. Chelsea, an abundance of signings. Liverpool won the fucking league. and bring bringing Jota and Thiago. Look at City. More fucking splashing the cash on their defenders. Tottenham. Especially fucking Tottenham. Mate, Regillon and Bale. The two players that we were interested in. Nah, didn't get it. Didn't happen. 
for whatever reason. Look, the buyback clause, I get that on Regalian, but, and the wages, we didn't want to pay Gareth Bale. I get that injury prone. Why the fuck are we signing Cavani? Why? I would pick Gareth Bale every day of the week and twice on Sundays than Edison Cavani. I don't get it. We don't want Falcao 2.0. We're we, we changed as a club. We don't want to play those, uh, pay those wages <clears throat> for players that don't want to be here. Oh, here you go, Cavani. 200k a week. No fucking worries. I just, where's the fucking leadership of this board? Where's the fucking vision? I don't even fucking know as a fan. Honestly, the confidence of this club is absolutely shattered. Now, as we go into signings, okay, every other club's made signings. Why haven't we made a bid for Jaden Sancho and the transfer window is about to close tomorrow? Well, I'll tell you why. Give you some insider scoop. United, if you don't know this, are more interested to the business side of things, okay, rather than the football. The Glazers, unfortunately, at our fucking club, are more interested <clears throat> in making financial deals business-wise than we are making football decisions. We haven't got fucking football leaders at the top of this club. We just don't. The Glazers are more interested in hanging out for the last game or the last day of the transfer window to make this Jaden Sancho signing. So every <clears throat> person, I was going to, I was going to use a cuss word there, but I'm not going to say that. They're going to wait to the last day of the transfer window because if we make a signing, deadly, a dead deadline day signing for Jaden Sancho, the tweets, the retweets, the Facebook post, everything on social media is just going to explode. The club <clears throat> can turn that into their business deals. Hey, do you know how big we are across the globe? We have this many followers. We've had this many retweets. It's all about the money. Yeah. Financially for Man United. That's what they care about most. They care more about that than what's happening on the field. And fundamentally, that's what's all gone wrong. We're hanging out these last couple of months so we don't have to pay the wages for Jaden Sancho. If we can hold back a couple of months, that's like two months <clears throat> we're saving on wages on Jaden Sancho. There's a few million right there. I won't be surprised if that is this club's way of thinking. Mate, if we sack Oli now, all right, that's going to be a fourth manager gone, okay? Why isn't the board held accountable? Why? <sighs> These are the questions we've got to be asking, have got to be asking. And this is the thing now, yeah? Jaden Sancho, even if we do sign him, okay, we are pinning all our hopes and dreams on a 20 year old kid that who's going to be on high wages. Is that the pressure we want to be putting on this kid? Honestly, he's our saving grace and hope. Jaden Sancho, come in, mate. Save us. He's a fucking 20 year old kid. I don't know. It's just a recipe for disaster. <laughs> as much as I want him at the club, I just think, fuck me, dead. There is so much pressure for this kid. Fucking hell. Does he even want to come? Mate, if he goes into Liverpool, Liverpool squad next year, there's not going to be that much pressure on him. And he's going to have the fucking service. And he's going to have the team around him. And he's going to have the manager, the knowledge of what to do to him. We don't even know if our manager's good enough to be <coughs> fit for his role right now. It's a fucking shambles, Manchester United right now. A fucking shambles. I apologize in advance for my swearing. But fucking hell, mate. And the funny thing is, <laughs> my summary in my notes, it's not going to get better anytime soon. I promise you this. If the Glazers are still around, I promise you this. These same conversations are going to be happening in another three years, in another five years, in another 10 years, and so on. It's fucking disappointing nothing is going to change somehow some way 
We need to get these fucking owners out of here. The Glazers, do us a favor. Fuck off. Fuck off. If you don't want to fucking be here to be the fucking best, then fuck right off. You got no business being here competing with teams like Liverpool who generally want to be the best. Manchester City spending all the fucking money because why they want to be the fucking best. Look at Chelsea, mate. Roman Abramovich, his attentions is crystal fucking clear. I want to be the best Premier League team. Here's money, Frank. Spend it. Look, it's just fucking frustrating. I'm just going to end the video right here. Lads, lasses, thank you for watching this video. I wish you nothing but the best. Take care and peace.